Tennessee's 2024 football schedule has finally been released. A couple of change-ups there towards the end of the schedule. My thoughts will rank the games, all that and more, plus transfer portal notes. It's going to be a fun one here on a Thursday at Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into it, your Thursday edition of Locked on Vols. I am your host, Eric Kane. Appreciate you for being here, making Locked on Vols your first listen every single day. Shout out, as always, everydayers. It's a privilege to talk to you guys every single day. We got a fun show coming up. Like I said, the 2024 schedule has officially been released. My thoughts on that. We're going to rank those opponents from the weakest down to the strongest based on where they are on the schedule. And then the latest in the transfer portal in regards to Tennessee, all coming up here on a Thursday Lockdown Vols. This episode is presented in part by FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive into it. Tennessee's 2024 college football schedule. Uh, we talked about it. We had uh, Chris Lowe of ESPN that put out some reports a couple of weeks ago. VolQuest put out some reports. So we were kind of piecing together what that schedule was going to look like. And there was a curveball there towards the end. And I'll get to that in a moment. But ultimately, this is what the schedule is. If you're watching on YouTube, I flashed up a cute little graphic that I made. I had to search for the template, but I got her done here. Um, August 31st, UTC, that's Tennessee Chattanooga. September the 2nd, NC State. Again, that game is in Charlotte. September the 14th is Kent State. And then Tennessee hits the road for, a, for its first true road game and to kick off the SEC slate at Oklahoma on September the 21st. Obviously, that's made for TV, just like that two-hour production was last night. Tennessee will get a break, a bye week, the first of two, coming on September the 28th. Tennessee will jump back into SEC play on the road again at Arkansas on October the 5th, come home against Florida October the 12th. Third Saturday in October, that tradition lives on, at least for this year. I think it's going to continue to live on, but October the 19th. Tennessee will then have a bye week on October the 26th. Now, we previously thought that the Kentucky game would come on October the 26th, and so Tennessee would have a gauntlet of an October slate of at Arkansas and then three straight games at home against Florida, Alabama, and Kentucky. Now, the curveball is this. The bye week, the second bye week, is there at the end of October on the 26th. So what that means is Tennessee will open up the month of November on the 2nd at home against Kentucky, another home game against Mississippi State on the 9th, at Georgia on the 16th, coming back home on November 23rd for homecoming against UTEP, and then finishing off the 2024 regular season at Vanderbilt to uh, end things off. So again, that's the 2024 slate, and uh, I'm excited about it, man. I, I truly am. I think that um, it's exciting. First and foremost, you guys know that Again, as a content creator, more football is the better. And so we technically get like another week of the season with an additional buy. I know it's how the calendar shakes out for the year of 2024 and all that. But Tennessee, all SEC teams get two bye weeks, which means we have another week of to talk football, even though there's no game. So I'm pumped about that to begin with. But I think this is really, really interesting. I mean, again, Tennessee should open up with a win against Chattanooga. We'll rank these opponents here in just a moment. But open up a win against UTC. Tennessee will get its first test. I think Tennessee's better than NC State, but a quality opponent, NC State, that won nine games. I think won five straight to end the regular season this year. Um, had wins over Clemson, North Carolina. It got a transfer portal commit in Grayson McCall, which is going to be exciting for the Wolfpack. So Tennessee will get its first test in week two of the season against NC State. Neutral side at Charlotte. Been there, done that, but it is what it is. Come back a breather against Kent State, an awful football team. Then on the road. And sure, it's made for TV. I get it. But, you know, this matchup against Oklahoma is going to be talked about all offseason. It's going to be talked about all summer long. Josh Heupel going home. Um, John, you know, national championship winning quarterback returns home to face off against his Sooners. Um, it's going to be an emotional game for Josh Heupel, and I would expect it to be, obviously. But, you know, keeping your emotions in check, just like you talk about with your football team, but for your head coach in that game, I think it's going to be big. But that's going to be a massive game. Oklahoma's a good football team. 
Lost Dylan Gabriel, Gabriel, of course, but does have a five-star quarterback ready to step in and go. That's going to be an exciting football game, but I like the fact that Tennessee gets tested a little bit before Oklahoma. Um, you know, this year going to Florida, Tennessee wasn't tested at all. Going to Florida, and you saw Tennessee got <laughs> stepped on its toe and fall, fell flat on its face. And so I like the fact that Tennessee's getting tested against a quality opponent in NC State two weeks before going to Oklahoma on the 21st of September. Plus, I'm pumped to cover that game. I've never been there. My dad's from there. My dad actually grew up before moving to Tennessee when he was like five or six. I uh, went to a couple of those games, so uh, I'm, I'm pumped to go and, and check out the Sooners. Tennessee has a bye week the following week. Then you go to Arkansas, you know, second SEC game, both on the road. Where is Arkansas going to be at that point in time? I, I don't know. Uh, Bobby Petrino is coming back, and um, K.J. Jefferson is your quarterback for right now. We'll have to see. Rocket Sanders transferred out. It's a winnable football game, but again, it's on the road, and that's where Tennessee's kind of had its bugaboos, right? So back-to-back -back SEC games on the road. you got a bye week sandwiched in there, so that helps a little bit. But then you come home for the home stretch. Florida on the 12th. Um, well, Florida's got Tennessee's number, but the last time these two teams squared off in Neyland Stadium, Tennessee did win this one. Alabama, third Saturday in October, of course. Alabama won, uh, coming back from 13 down on its home field, Bright Denny. This past year, last time Alabama played on this field, lost in that 52-49 thriller that we'll remember for of all time. Um, so that's going to be a two-game stretch. It's going to be tough. But you do have that bye weekend that breaks it off where Tennessee can come back, welcomes Kentucky, where, again, like Tennessee's been dominated by Florida, Tennessee typically dominates Kentucky in the series history. Um, so, I mean, that bye week helps. It'll be a challenging game, but you got Kentucky, a very winnable game against Mississippi State with tempo and tempo and um, – you know, Mississippi State and Jeff Levy and all that, so that'll be exciting. And then you've got Georgia, which is going to be super challenging, obviously, on the road in Athens. Um, Carson Beck, we believe, is going to come back and quarterback that football team, but it's not been set in stone. But nonetheless, it's going to be a tough game in Athens, UTEP, and then Vanderbilt. So, again, it's going to be a challenging slate. But where the buys are kind of positioned, I think, does help Tennessee. And I love the fact that Tennessee is going to be tested in a neutral side against NC State. Tennessee should win that game, in my opinion. But um, you will be tested before you go on the road and take on Oklahoma. So uh, one more time, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll flash that screen if you're listening. Or the flash this graphic on the screen if you're listening. This is what the schedule looks like in 2024 for Tennessee. August 31st, UTC. September 7th, NC State in Charlotte, neutral site. September 14th, Kent State. September 21st, at Oklahoma. September 28th is the first of two bye weeks. October the 5th, at Arkansas. October the 12th, against Florida at home. October 19th, third Saturday in October at Neyland Stadium against Alabama. The second bye week, October 26th, back at home against Kentucky on November the 2nd. Home against Mississippi State, November the 9th. At Georgia, November the 16th. UTEP for homecoming on November the 23rd at home. And then, of course, add Vanderbilt to end the regular season on November the 30th. Hey, when we come back, let's rank these opponents from weakest to toughest. All that and more right here on Lockdown Vols. Do want to tell you about our friends over at Price Picks. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. The easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than your two to six player stat projections. And then you watch those winnings roll in. I've had so much fun this year winning 25 times my money back this football season over at Price Picks, and you can too. And now with basketball season here, you can pick combo projections across football and basketball in the specials league. You can take, um, you know, you can take a combined, say, 12 and a half of receptions for, you know, your favorite wide receiver and three pointers made from your favorite three-point shooter in the NBA. You can do all that and more at the Specials League as well. Plus, you do have a reboot policy at PricePix.com, so your your plays stay relevant even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. PricePix is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Not bad at all. Plus, if you go to PricePix.com, put in the promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, PricePix.com slash LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, you're going to get a first deposit match up to $100. Not bad at all. Go have fun. Win 25 times your money back. You can at, well, you can do that as well at pricepicks.com. That's pricepicks.com slash locked on college. Pricepicks.com slash locked on college for an instant deposit match up to $100. <laughs> 
So Tennessee's 2024 football schedule has been released. We told you what that was in segment number one. Now let's take a look at the schedule in terms of strength of schedule. Um, who are the toughest opponents on that schedule and kind of how that ranks, you know, how, how the, the schedule is laid out. So we're going to rank those opponents. We'll start with the 12th worst team, or I guess 12th best team. 12th worst team would be the number one best team. So 12th best team, which is number one worst team words uh we're gonna start that and work our way down to number one so worst to best and uh we'll start with it right now all right the uh the, the last place team here the weakest team on the schedule for tennessee is going to be kent state that'll be september the 14th and that will be week number three of the season uh one of the worst fbs teams in college football this past year went one and eleven um it was one win was against central connecticut uh, the Golden Flashes in their 11 losses lost by an average of 24.2 points per game. Kent State ranked last at number one third, at 133rd overall in the ESPN's Football Power Index. So not a whole lot going on right there at Kent State. Of course, that's the third game of the season for Tennessee and a chance to get an easy dub. So weakest team on the schedule would be Kent State. At number 11 would be UTC. Now, UTC, of course, is another FCS program, but it's a team that went to the second round of the college or to the second round of the FCS playoffs. It took down Austin P, who I thought was a pretty good football team in uh, in round number one. It's getting its quarterback. I can't say his last name, but his first name is Chase. He missed time due to injury, but he threw for 20 touchdowns this past season. He should be returning. They were eight and five overall, went six and two in SOCON play, um, lost twice, played Furman, who was ranked seventh in the country the last game of the regular season and then met them and, and then ultimately met their demise in the second round of the playoffs. So two of those losses were to Furman, but nonetheless, UTC and FCS opponent, uh, the opener for Tennessee, the ball should roll in this one and uh, should be a, a neat, nice little easy season opening victory. At number 10, we'll go UTEP, a little homecoming game here. Speaking of Austin P earlier, former Austin P head coach Scotty Walden, is the new head coach at UTEP. They went three and nine this past year. Of course, made a change at head coaching at the head coaching position. Um, let's see here. Only wins last year for UTEP came against um, FIU, Sam Houston, and somebody else. I can't figure out who else that is. But anyway, they were only three and nine. It's a homecoming game for Tennessee. It's a nice break in the schedule to where you're at Georgia, and then you will come home on the twenty third for homecoming against UTEP. So a nice little breather after a tough game against Georgia before you wrap up the regular season and jump back into SEC play at Vanderbilt the next week. Speaking of Vanderbilt, the ninth toughest game on the schedule this year is going to be at Vanderbilt, November the 30th. Um, I mean, right now, are you playing quarterback for Vanderbilt or am I playing quarterback for Vanderbilt? Either one is better than who they have now, which I believe is no scholarship quarterbacks on roster. Uh, you had Walter Taylor, Ken Seals, and A.J. Swan all dart to the transfer portal. Will Shepard, their only impact player on the football team at wide receiver, who I think could declare for the NFL draft and get drafted this year, he's entered the transfer portal. So, I mean, Ray Davis is there a couple years ago. Of course, he was at Kentucky this past year. Um, Vanderbilt's got nobody right now. Um, I mentioned, of course, and there was a report out there that uh, the collective had gotten a, some strong backing from some donors, and so they've got some money right now. I mean, they need to go spend it to get some players to come to Vanderbilt um, because right now that program is not good and uh, should be a nice little easy way to end the regular season for Tennessee. Vanderbilt there at number nine. At number eight, I'm going to go Arkansas. Um, you know, VolQuest first reported that back in November that Tennessee is going to go to Fayetteville on October the 5th to take on the Hogs. Um, it'll be the second SEC game of the year for Tennessee. It's another road game, though. Two, first two SEC games, both on the road. Arkansas, I just again, like I mentioned in, in segment number one, where's Arkansas going to be at this point in the season? It appears for now that KJ Jefferson is going to be its quarterback. There were tons of rumors swirling on the day the transfer portal opened, or maybe a couple days before the transfer portal opened, that KJ Jefferson was going to enter the portal. He came out on Instagram, Instagram and said, hey, I haven't made my decision yet. That, that was like two weeks ago, so it looks like he's staying. But how is he going to relate to new offensive coordinator, which is former Arkansas head coach Bobby Petrino? I love college football so much. Um, I don't know. Your running back, Rocket Sanders, is gone. He's expected to transfer to South Carolina. Sam Pittman, again, coaching for his life. Where's Arkansas going to be there on October the 5th? Number eight, the toughest, the eighth toughest game on the schedule for Tennessee, I believe, 
is going to be at Arkansas. At number seven, I'll go Mississippi State. Um, and a lot of this has to do with, I like their coach, Jeff Levy. I like quarterback that came that's coming in and Blake Shapin. Shopping, what, however you say his name, I like him, even though I can't say his name. He threw for over 5,000 yards, 36 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, and three years at Baylor. Uh, we're going to get tempo, tempo, tempo. Might not be the quickest game you've ever seen, but there might be as, more plays than you've ever seen in this one football game with Mississippi State and Tennessee next year. You have Josh Heupel squaring off against his old offensive coordinator and Jeff Levy and quarterbacks coach. Maybe we could have flip-flopped Mississippi State and Arkansas. I recognize Arkansas is on the road. Mississippi State game is at home, but I think both those games are very winnable for Tennessee. At number seven, Mississippi State. Now, the sixth toughest game on the schedule for Tennessee, in my humble opinion, is going to be Kentucky. Again, I said that was kind of the changeup. Thought Kentucky was going to come at the end of October. No, the bye week is the 26th for Tennessee, the second one. And so Tennessee opens November with Kentucky. Uh, Three-game, tough conference stretch. All right. Then you've got Kentucky. Uh, new quarterback, Devin Leary's out. Brock Vandergriff. Backup quarterback at Georgia, former five-star quarterback, has transferred to Kentucky. What's he look like? Ray Davis, again, one of the best running backs in the SEC. He's going to the NFL. At this time, he's still have Barry and Brown and Dane Key at wide receiver. So um, if you can keep that together, maybe they can work with Brock Vandergriff. they got to have a running game as well. But Kentucky, they started off 5-0 and last year, but lost five of the last seven games to end the regular season. History says to take the Volunteers. All right, we will go to our fifth toughest game now. Fifth toughest game on the schedule for Tennessee is going to be NC State. And, and, and maybe this is too high, but again, NC State won nine games this year. They finished strong, won five of their last seven, or let's see here, they won, they won five straight to end the year. All right, they had wins over Clemson, Miami, North Carolina, and, and Wake Forest. I, I understand those aren't juggernaut wins. I understand North Carolina was down this year. Miami was down this year. Clemson finished strong, but at points in time was down this year. But give credit where credit's due. You won nine games, finished strong. You're going to get a significant upgrade at quarterback from Brendan Armstrong to, to Grayson McCauley there at NC State. So, you know, like I said in, in segment one, I love this game because Tennessee's going to get tested before going on the road uh, to, um, to Oklahoma. So I think this game has potential to – be a pretty good one. I understand. I think Tennessee should win this game, but I think this game has potential to be a pretty good one. Number four, fourth toughest game on the schedule is going to be Florida. It's going to be at home. All right. But Florida just owns Tennessee. It is what it is. I mean, just like Tennessee owns Kentucky, it's the same thing, but flipped Tennessee owns Kentucky. Florida owns Tennessee. I know it doesn't go back as far as Kentucky, but it is, is what it is. Um, Tennessee just has struggles with Florida typically, but the last time these two teams played on Neyland stadiums, turf, Grass, natural grass, Tennessee came out on top. Graham Mertz played his best football of his career. He's coming back. Uh, Eugene Wilson the third had a phenomenal freshman campaign. Montrell Johnson going to take a step up in the backfield now with Trevor Etienne transferring, probably going to Georgia. Um, it's Florida. You still have good players, but that was a bad Florida football team this year. The reason they're so high, we're, despite it being at home, again, is because Tennessee just doesn't handle Florida well. It just doesn't. And you got to win last year and try to give it away. So we'll see what happens. Also, Billy Napier coaching for his life, coaching for his life in this one. Uh, that's going to be intriguing. But because Tennessee struggles so much with the Gators routinely, I have Florida at number four. The third toughest game on the schedule for Tennessee, in my opinion, is going to be at Oklahoma. Yes, I know. Dylan Gabriel transferring to Oregon. I get it. But just like we're ready for the Nico era, Oklahoma's excited about the Jackson Arnold era as well. Five-star quarterback. He did get his toes wet a little bit, came in and, and placed Dylan Gabriel a couple of times and helped help get some wins for Oklahoma this year. It was the third highest scoring offense in the country last year at 43 points, point something. Um, of course, that was Jeff Levy. Levy now leaves and goes to Mississippi State, but um, that's going to be a tough one. Great environment. First SEC game for Oklahoma is going to be at home. Josh Heupel going home, all that type of stuff. The circus. There's going to be so much extracurricular storylines in this one outside of the game of football, and it's going to be a challenge, and it's going to be on the road. So at number three, I will go at Oklahoma. Number two and number one, obviously Alabama-Georgia. At number two, I have Alabama simply because at least this is a home game. You can flip-flop these. It is what it is, but Georgia's on the road in Athens. I'll take Georgia in the top spot. But for Alabama, Jalen Milrow's coming back. You know he's going to be in the Heisman conversation the entire time. Who's going to replace talented guys off the edges? Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell defensively. 
Like Alabama's going to be okay. They'll find some guys. But Alabama, year in and year out, recruiting well, got a stable of running backs, good at the line of scrimmage, good enough at wide receiver, outside of being you know wide receiver you there for a little bit. Alabama's going to be a tough game, obviously, but you do get it at home. And so that brings us to the toughest game on the schedule, and I think it's in Georgia, at, at Georgia, in Athens. And um, kind of the same with Alabama, right? I mean, without digging too down deep into the rosters and who they're getting via the transfer portal and – you know, which players leaving for the draft and this end and that, but recruiting, tacking, stacking, you know, top three classes nationally on top of top three classes nationally on top of top three classes nationally. It's where Alabama and Georgia are. You're losing Brock Bowers, who's a generational talent, but you're going to have somebody that can step up in the spot. Carson Beck is the one domino. We believe that Carson Beck's coming back, but there's some out there thinking that he could be a day one draft pick. If you're a day one draft pick, you go, right? Uh, but with the uh, under the assumption that Carson Beck is back, certainly this makes it a little bit easier. It's going to be a challenging game for Tennessee either way. Plus, it's on the road, and I haven't, you know, I'm still early in my career. I haven't covered as many games on the road. I've covered a lot of games on the road the last couple of years, but I just started traveling, covering SEC games on the road a couple of years ago. There's not been a place, and again, keep in mind at Neyland Stadium, we're in a we're in a closed press box, so I don't get to hear it. Um, I still hear it some, but I don't truly get to hear it. I've never heard a louder stadium than Georgia last year in 2022. So how does Tennessee handle that environment? All right, let's review here. This is how I would rate them in terms of weakest to toughest opponents for Tennessee in 2022, 2024. Uh, Number 12 on the schedule, Kent State. Number 11, UTC. Number 10, UTEP. Number 9 at Vanderbilt. Number 8 at Arkansas. Number 7, Mississippi State. Number 6, Kentucky. Number 5, NC State. Neutral side in Charlotte. Number four, Florida. Number three at Oklahoma. Number two, Alabama. And number one at Georgia. All right, when we come back, what's the latest in Tennessee in the transfer portal? That and a whole lot more. I'll share some notes here on the other side. I do want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, the weather gets colder, but the NFL offers stay hot. That's at FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 Moneyline bet, that is $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than right now because you can have fun looking at the spreads, uh, looking at individual player props where you can focus on solely one player, one area of the game to uh, take a little pressure off you a little bit. If you're new, I would encourage you to go check out the player props. The totals are so much fun. We love overs here on Lockdown Balls, but the unders are there in play as well and so much more. That's at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. To continue the NFL season today, FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, we got a final segment left here of this Thursday edition of Lockdown Vaults. Appreciate you for being here. Uh, usually I lead off the show with some latest notes, Tennessee in the transfer portal, uh, but with the schedule release, we have bigger fish to fry. Some would say that that's not true. Uh, and that's fair. Um, Tennessee needs to get to work on the transfer portal again. You know, at the time of this recording, late on a Wednesday night, um, Tennessee still does not have a commit from the transfer portal. It's not time to sound the alarm, in my opinion. But I mean, you know, we we were doing the Monday night chat at VolQuest.com Monday nights, Monday night chat on Monday nights, and one of the questions was asked kind of facetiously, but it was like, "Will we have a, a commit out of the transfer portal by this time next Monday night?" And I, I responded like, you better. I mean, you you freaking better, right? Um, so, you know, we'll see, man. And I expect Tennessee to get a, a commit or two by at least Monday, but we'll see. I mean, nothing, to my knowledge, nothing's nothing's like ready to roll right now. And typically, you know, if something's ready to roll, I'll be like, yeah, I expect this guy to be in the class or, you know, whatever. But right now, nothing's, set, n- nothing's ready to roll. And that, that doesn't mean, again, that it's time to, t- time to sound the panic alarm. It's just you're evaluating so many guys right now. You are meeting so many guys right now. You're on the road. You're coming back. You're hosting quick little visits, all that type of stuff. I mean, Chris Basil, Brazel was in town on uh, on Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday morning when he was leaving after getting on campus Monday night. So, again, you know, small, short little trips for Tennessee. And so it is what it is. Here's kind of where we stand right now. Uh, again, I'll, I'll remind you, kind of run down this, this list here. Tennessee, in terms of current players, and I don't really expect many more to go. Um, I mean, the window's still open, but like, if you're going to go, if you want to enter the transfer portal, that's why I was talking about like with KJ Jefferson, like he's still not in. So it's like, if, if you're not in like by now, like what, what are you waiting on? Right. I mean, the spots are filling up <laughs> and, and, and you, 
Oh, God, I'm sorry. I've, I, again, time this recording, the last little bit of the two-hour special, the schedule release on the ESPN, or on the SEC Network, and I'm looking up, at, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm looking up at my TV here on, on the wall, and I see Eli Drinkwitz, and he's got a big old, I got a big old Christmas tree behind him. It was such a, such a kind of startling, you know, thing to turn around to and see, you know what I'm saying? I love cracking on Eli Drinkwitz because I think he's a clown, but again, I'll follow this up, man. I mean, he did a really good job this year. That's what it is. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to say no, never, but like, I mean, if you're going to enter the transfer portal, you should already be, you know, jumping on in that. It's my opinion. So Tennessee's lost nine so far, six from the defensive backfield. Warren Burrell, who's committed to Georgia Tech. Mo Clipper on the offensive line, who's committed to Charlotte's. Brandon Turnage, Jack Luttrell, Addison Nichols. Tyler Barron, Danico Slaughter, Deshaun Rucker, and Tamarian McDonald, all of which are in the transfer portal. See Tyler Barron right there. A lot of people were wondering why Lane Kiffin was at the, was the TAC Air a couple weeks ago, which is the small little tiny airport for private jets right beside McGee Tyson. Uh, if you didn't see it, go to his Twitter. He tweeted things out. I don't know why it was here. Jaden Daniels, uh, I've been told they were stopping to, to refuel uh, their you know the Heisman ceremony in New York. I would assume going back to Baton Rouge. I don't know why they picked Knoxville, Tennessee, but uh, he took a picture of this being Lane Kiffin with Jaden Daniels and sent out that tweet, and it was like, why are those two in Knoxville, Tennessee? was told that Jaden Daniels, his his, uh, his party had to stop and refuel, um, and Lane Kiffin, I, I don't know why Lane Kiffin was in Knoxville. I would just assume, and this is just me assuming, but I would assume he's here to talk to Tyler Barron. I mean, I mean like, like, why? I mean... Other guys in the portal, I mean, yeah, maybe Slaughter, maybe McDonald, I don't know. But, I mean, Tyler Barron is somebody that I think that, you know, they would want. So, um, anyway, I just thought that was interesting seeing that tweet. But uh, if I was a betting man, and I don't know this for sure, but I bet he was here to see Tyler Barron. Anyway, those are the players that have entered the portal for Tennessee. T Tennessee offers so far Marley Cook, um, a safety from MTSU. Defensive lineman from MTSU, excuse me. Uh, Remington Strickland, offensive lineman from Texas A&M. C. Gibbs, a cornerback from Rhode Island. Holden Stays, tight end from Notre Dame. Jordan Dingle, tight end from Kentucky. Chris Brazel, wide receiver from Tulane. Bauer Sharp, tight end from Southeastern Louisiana. Jalen Farmer, offensive guard from Florida. Jamard McCoy, safety from Oregon State. Marcus Harris, he is a defensive back from Idaho. Fidel Gibbs is a defensive lineman from Texas A&M. Devon Mitchell is a cornerback from Villanova. Those are some of the players Tennessee's offered so far. And then, of course, COVID seniors who have announced that they're coming back. That's John Campbell and Keenan Peely. All right, some of the latest notes uh, from a Wednesday for Tennessee. You got cornerback Gerard McCoy, again, I mentioned right there, from Oregon State. Um, he visited Tennessee Wednesday, expected to leave uh, early afternoon on Thursday. Tennessee's in this one, obviously. So was Texas A&M. So was Oregon. And so was Oklahoma. Um, his freshman year, he's got loads of eligibility left. But as a freshman, had two interceptions for Oregon State. Seven passes defended and 16 total tackles. So Tennessee in that one. Cornerback from Oregon State, who was in town at the time of this recording. And through the majority of Thursday before leaving Thursday afternoon. Um... Guard from Florida, Jalen Farmer. Um, believe he visited on Wednesday as well. Six foot four, 300 pounds, only 27 snaps over two games played this year. Uh, he visited Alabama. I believe he visited Ole Miss before making his decision to go to Florida. Not a whole lot of experience there, but in my opinion, looking at the 24 season, like you need development at tackle. Like you need Sham to get developed. You need Bennett Warren to come in and get developed. You need Brian Grant to continue to take some steps here. Um, you need some tackles, some young tackles to develop. But, you know, for this 2024 team, you feel good about where you are at tackle with John Campbell, with um, with Gerald Mincy, and with Dane Davis likely coming back. I think you need help at guard. You weren't great at guard this year. And Ollie Lane, who started 12 games for you, albeit four of those were at center, you know, he's gone. Andre Kirk was injured. He's coming back. But, I mean, really, was he that great for you? Javante Spragans, you believe, is going to be here, but still don't know for sure. Um, I would lean that Javante Spragans is a part of this team next year. I think you need help at guard, in my opinion. So, um, even though he's not done a whole lot, just create some competition, right? I mean, that's kind of where Jalen Farmer is for Tennessee. Um, Tennessee also handed out an offer to Devin Marshall. Uh, Devin Marshall from Villanova, the cornerback. Let's see here. 60 tackles. 
Three and a half TFLs, 13 passes defended over two seasons at Villanova. Uh, 13 games this year, he had 60 tackles. Okay, so all that was this year, I guess. I guess he redshirted the year before. Um, he was a really, really good high school player, conference MVP. Uh, he was a really, really good returner as well. His senior year in high school, not that that matters, it was two years ago, but his senior year in high school, he returned five, or he returned five kicks for touchdown, whether it be punts or, or kick return. He returned five of those for touchdown, which was pretty good, and uh, played a key part in its high school state championship team as a senior. So that's Devin Marshall. I would think he'd be in town uh, maybe over the weekend for Tennessee, and, and we'll see exactly where that stands. Uh, Rodney Garner was with uh, Fidel Diggs in home visits on Wednesday. Of course, he's a defensive lineman um, from A&M, really, really active. I believe he's a graduate from Texas A&M as well. I just wouldn't allocate all that many resources to a defensive lineman. That's just my opinion. Now, if Diggs wants to come here and learn from Rodney Gardner and try to get to the NFL, then that's one thing. But I wouldn't allocate a, a whole lot of funds to a defensive lineman, just my opinion. But he was meeting with Rodney Gardner. Anyway, as you can tell, a lot of names right now. It's all swirling around. We'll try to get an official visit list for this weekend. I think it's going to be kind of big. I think Tennessee might have around 10, maybe more uh, official visitors in for this weekend. So, Tennessee needs to pick them up, put them down here. Tennessee, you know, pedal the metal. They they gotta they gotta figure some things out. Um, this time last year, you already had two. I think uh, Charles Campbell and McCallan Castles were your first two, but uh, you need to start getting some guys, some commits from the transfer portal for sure. In my opinion, especially especially a freaking tight end. <laughs> All right, we'll come back for a Friday edition of Lockdown Vols. Can't thank you enough for being here, making Lockdown Vols your first listen. I, I share the graphic. Um, shout out graphics department making that graphic for me. Shared it on YouTube or on uh, Twitter about how we surpassed uh, ten thousand subscribers on the on the on the uh, Lockdown Vols YouTube channel. Seriously, thank you so much. I know I talk about it. I beg all the time. I, I promise. Um, I do appreciate it. It means so much. We continue to grow this show. One of the best shows on the network, one of the best shows on the college channel, and uh, it is all because of you, and I can't thank you enough. We'll come back on Friday. We'll tell you the latest Tennessee in the transfer portal, anything else. Plus, I want to hear your reaction. What do you think of Tennessee's football schedule for 2024? That and a whole lot more Locked On Vols right here on uh, wherever you listen to your podcast and, of course, on the Locked On Vols YouTube channel.